Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Sim Pilots YouTube channel. In this video, we will have a look at how the aerodromes in the UK operate and their law. I have created using this video with images just to make it more fun and understand it better. If you do enjoy, please let me know for more videos like this. Thank you and enjoy the video. Aerodromes Aerodromes UK General Characteristics An aerodrome is an area of land or water used for the taking off and landing of aircraft. Aerodromes are divided into many categories depending on their use. The Aerodromes section of the UK Aeronautical Information publication contains an aerodrome directory giving specific information on physical characteristics, local hazards, and flying restrictions. Limitations on the use of aerodromes. Certain restrictions apply at some aerodromes and not at others. At military aerodromes, and at civil aerodromes with an ordinary license, prior permission to land is needed from the aerodrome authority, and at unlicensed aerodromes the prior permission of the owner or person in charge. This may be designated in documents as PPR, which stands for Prior Permission Required. PPR usually means that you should telephone the airfield operator or owner before departure, particularly if there is no radio frequency published for the airfield. Remember that if you simply turn up and land without seeking permission you are trespassing on private property. Further, there may be safety implications as a particular airstrip may be used only in a certain direction or in certain wind conditions. It may be prone to waterlogging or there could be specific noise abatement procedures to be followed. Failure to seek permission and the requisite information could lead to an accident and subsequent refusal by the insurance company to pay for the claim because you have breached the air navigation order. Permission to use a military aerodrome must always be obtained before taking off for the aerodrome concerned. You will likely have to demonstrate a higher level of insurance cover to land at a military aerodrome. The civil use of military aerodrome is restricted to the normal hours of watch and to aircraft on inland flights. At some military aerodromes, Civil use is further restricted to certain classes of traffic. Example scheduled services, charter flights or private aircraft. The above restrictions on aerodrome use would not apply in the case of an in-flight emergency. Aerodromes not listed in the aerodromes section of the aeronautical information publication may be used in an emergency or if prior permission from the owner or operator is obtained. ANO Article 209 if a flight is for the purpose of instruction in flying to enable a person to become qualified for the grant of for pilot's license for the inclusion of a rating or carrying out a flying test for any of these purposes, then before an unlicensed aerodrome or non-EASA certified aerodrome may be used, the operator of such an aerodrome must be satisfied that the aerodrome has adequate facilities for the safe conduct of such flights, and the commander of the aircraft must not take off unless the pilot is similarly satisfied. Aviation Fuel at Aerodromes ANO Article 220 No person shall cause or permit any fuel to be used in an aircraft if the pilot knows or has reason to believe that it is not fit for such use. Fuel must not be used in aircraft unless it has been dealt with in accordance with certain stipulations for the storage and sampling of aviation fuel stocks at aerodromes. Note, as a guide to the pilot and others, and in an attempt to avoid refueling the wrong type of fuel, AVGA's equipment at aerodromes is usually marked in red. Notification of arrival and departure. If an aircraft is expected at an aerodrome the commander must inform the authorities at the aerodrome as soon as possible if the destination is changed or arrival will be delayed by 45 minutes or more. This is to avoid any unnecessary overdue action. Wherever possible an aircraft's commander must report upon arrival and prior to departure to the appropriate authority at an aerodrome. Custom Facilities Designated customs and excise airports for the purpose of international travel are listed in GEN, General Section of the UK, IP, together with the hours of attendance and special requirements. Security ICOA Annex 17 ICOA Annex 17 deals with aviation security. The overall objectives are to prevent unlawful interference with civil aviation, to keep people safe, to protect passengers and staff, to be capable of responding rapidly to meet any increased security threat. It is vital that you understand the local organizations of security where you fly from. Security is everyone's responsibility. Aeronautical Light Beacons Aeronautical light beacons are installed at various civil and military aerodromes in the UK. Their hours of operations vary, but broadly speaking they can be expected to be on at night and by day in bad visibility, whenever the aerodrome is operating. Aeronautical light beacons include Identification beacons, which flash a two-letter Morse group every 12 seconds. Green at civil aerodrome. 
aerodromes and red at military aerodromes and aerodrome beacons which give an alternative color flash signal instead, usually white or white or less commonly white or green. They are not normally provided in addition to an identification beacon. Movement of Aircraft on Aerodromes Rule 12 Rules of the Air Regs 2015 An aircraft must not taxi on the apron or the maneuvering area of an aerodrome without the permission of the aerodrome authorities. The maneuvering area of an aerodrome is that part of the aerodrome provided for takeoff and landing of aircraft and for the movement of aircraft on the surface that is taxing excluding aprons and maintenance areas. An apron is a paved area of an aerodrome used for purposes such as loading and unloading of aircraft, aircraft turnaround operations, maintenance and repair, and any other approved purpose other than flight operations. Access on aerodromes Rule 13. A person shall not, without permission, go onto a part of an aerodrome provided for the use of aircraft. This applies to any part that is not a public right-of-way. Right of way on the ground SERA 3210. Five rules for taxing on the maneuvering area of an aerodrome. Number one, regardless of any ATC clearance, it is the duty of an aircraft commander to do all the possible to avoid collision on the ground with other aircraft or vehicles or with any obstacles. Where an aircraft is being towed and the commander of the aircraft is not on board, then that duty lies with the person in charge of the vehicle towing the aircraft. Number two, aircraft on the ground must give way to those taking off or landing and to any vehicle towing an aircraft. Number 3. When two aircraft are approaching head-on, or nearly so, each must turn right. Number 4. When two aircraft are converging, the one which has the other on its right must give way, avoiding crossing ahead of the other unless passing well clear. Number 5. An aircraft which is being overtaken by another has right of way, and the overtaking aircraft must keep out of the way until passed and well clear. Aerodrome Traffic Zones A. T. Zs. A certain amount of airspace surrounding most aerodromes in the UK has been designated as aerodrome traffic zones, usually because of the intensity of aerial activity. Runway Characteristics Declared distance at aerodromes are agreed by the relevant authority in the UK. This is the C. A. A. And the distance is published in the aerodrome section off the A. I. P. Takeoff run available. T. O. R. A. The length of the runway was declared available and suitable for the ground run of an airplane taking off. Takeoff distance available. TODA. The length of the takeoff run available plus the length of the clearway, if provided. Accelerate stop distance available. LSDA. The length of the takeoff run available plus the length of the stopway, if provided. Landing distance available. L. D. A. The length of runway declared available and suitable for the ground run of an airplane landing. Thank you for watching. That's the end of part 1. For Aerodromes UK and its its general characteristics. If you did enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.